This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and today we are revisiting the Vero Double Shackle Bloca Catena Bike Lock. This lock was sent to me by Paul in the Netherlands, and I recently featured it in video number 659. In that video, I showed that we could pretty easily pick into this, but I also asked for your suggestions on what you thought an effective destructive attack would be on this lock. Not on the chain, but on the lock itself. The reason I asked was because I think Vero did a pretty good job putting it together, and Paul, the person who sent it to me, wanted to see how I would attack this destructively. And frankly, I didn't see many attack vectors that would be a significant improvement over simply cutting the chain. My best idea was to insert two levers in between these two shackles and press them apart, the idea being to break the steel and brass where it is the thinnest. The problem with that is that Vero appears to have thought of that already, and they weaken the shackle on purpose by drilling out the center and by turning down the profile, such that if we apply too much force, we're more likely to break the top of the shackle off than we are to break through the side of the lock. So I asked for your ideas, and you guys came up with a lot of good ones, but let me go through them because I don't think any are very likely to succeed. The first was to use the ram set, and I, there was a couple different strike points suggested. The first was on the side of the shackle, essentially trying to do exactly what I would do with a lever, but with the ram set. A couple problems with that. The first is, of course, the shackle breaking away. The second would be there is no good way to secure the lock, so if we hit it with a ram set, we're likely just to push the lock away rather than actually breaking through the side of it. Then we have a strike point on the bottom. The idea would be to hit right about here or here, break through the hardened steel, and press the shackle upwards. Couple problems with that. The first is that breaking through hardened steel is not an easy thing to do. It is plausible, but more basically, this is how we would have to place the lock if we are going to do it and by pushing downward with the ram set piston, we would be pushing the shackle into the ground. There's no good way to get leverage on it. So even if we could do that, I'm not convinced there's any scenario in which you could hold this in the real world where that could work. Another suggested strike point was right here in between the two shackles. That is where the actuator for the ball bearing locking mechanism is. The idea would be to push that actuator down, thus allowing the ball bearings to move inward. There's a couple problems there. The first, of course, is the hardened steel, but let's assume that we can get past that. I think we're far more likely to seize up the lock permanently by doing that than we are to allow those ball bearings to move freely. Another suggested tool for attacking this was the slide hammer. The idea would be to somehow attach the slide hammer to these shackles and pull outward on them. Couple problems there. The first, of course, is the weakened shackle. We're just as likely to break the shackle as we are to overcome the locking mechanism. However, more basically, this has a ball bearing locking mechanism, which was specifically designed to defeat hammer blows, and it's very, very effective at it. I don't think it's very likely, even if we were to hold on to this, that we could realistically expect to pull through that locking mechanism. I have done experiments on the past with hammer attacks on ball bearing locking mechanisms, and sometimes we have shackles that break, but I have never encountered a situation in which I actually overcame it. So I'm not gonna use the slide hammer. Another suggestion was drilling the shackles. Vero had already done part of the work by drilling out. People had suggested that I drill through it a little farther. Two problems there. The first is this is hardened steel, and anyone who does much work with metal knows that drilling hardened steel is very difficult. But then we also have free spinning shackles, which means as soon as your drill bit gets any bite into this, the shackle's just going to spin. So lots of problems with trying to drill this thing out. There are some who suggested that I drill in a different way. The idea would be to put the chuck of a drill over the shackle, spin it up, and then put some sort of abrasive, maybe a diamond file in between the lock mechanism where the chain is, and cut the shackle in half. 
I think that might actually work. However, as long as we're using power tools with a grinding attack, I would think we might as well just use a grinder, the purpose-built tool for it. I think we'd probably get through the lock a lot faster. Now one intriguing idea, which I think is probably the most likely to succeed of all the suggestions, was to use a chisel and insert it right here, right where this shackle meets the lock body, and try to press this shackle outwards, much like I would with levers, but by using a chisel down where the, the shackle is stronger. I'm not sure there's a way to fit a chisel in there, but we might be able to do it with a specially designed punch. Maybe put it in here, or maybe even insert it on this side, try to break the lock body away a little bit, and then push the shackle out. I think that could plausibly work. So here's my plan. We're gonna take this down to the garage. I've actually modified a couple of levers that will fit just in between here. They're three foot long pieces of angle iron, so leverage is not going to be an issue and we're going to push these two shackles apart for all we're worth. I think the most likely outcome is that we're going to shear or bend one of these shackle tops. And if that happens, we'll put the levers away and I will get my specially designed punch and see if we can do any better by hitting this with a hand sledge. And if neither of those succeed, then, then I'm gonna give the Vero a pass. Now I'm not saying this is the best lock in the world. Let's say it's, it succeeds in defeating all of my best brute force efforts. It doesn't mean it can't be quickly opened up with a, an angle grinder or a large pair of bolt cutters, which it probably can through this eight and a half millimeter chain. All I'm saying is that the design of the Bloca Katena lock is very, very good. Okay, so let's take everything downstairs to the garage and see what happens. Okay, folks, we're down in the garage, and our first attempt will be spreading these two shackles using these pieces of one and a quarter inch angle iron. I drilled a couple holes in the angle iron so I could get this firmly over the shackles. And the idea would be to spread these apart like a class two lever and try to pull those out. So, you get these in the best possible position and start spreading. And as I predicted, that shackle just snapped off. Vero did a great job weakening the shackle so that could not be used against the lock and it worked exactly as it was intended. Okay, next, we're going to try our little attack with the with this little modified punch. I'm gonna place it right about here and see if we can do some damage with this three pound hammer. Looks like we are bending the punch, which is itself hardened steel. Okay, we're making some progress. It looks like we have broken the hardened steel there. Let me just keep going down, and then we'll move to the other side of the shackle. Okay, I think we have weakened that significantly. So let's try to hit it on the other side of the shackle now. We may have messed up the tip of this punch too much for it to work right now. Okay, let me actually repair the tip of this punch and then we'll finish the job. Okay, the tip of the punch is repaired, so let's try to put this right about here, and hopefully we'll be able to open this up.
we're making some progress, but not a whole lot. This lock is holding up very, very well to this attack. See if I can use that to lift the shackle up. Okay, I think we might be past the ball bearing. out all right. We're tearing up this punch and we still are not even close to having it opened, but at least we're making progress. Okay, let me get a pair of pliers and maybe we can pull that out a little better. Actually, here's an idea. Let's take our levers out again. And, okay, we broke the other shackle. Vero did a great job making sure that these things were weak where they should be weak and strong where they should be strong. Okay, I'm gonna give this a pass for now. I think we could eventually open this up if I spent a lot more time on it. However, we are getting past the amount of time and the noise that would be plausible for stealing a bike in public. Okay, we're back upstairs, so let's take a closer look at what happened to this lock. You can see that we broke both of the shackle tops off. And if we look carefully at the pieces, we can see that one of them failed at the intended point where the, the shackle was hollowed out and where there is a small waist in the profile. At that point, the shackle is only about 25 thousandths of an inch thick, so clearly it was designed to break and it broke as intended. This one, however, did not break at the designed fail point. It broke down here where the shackle makes a small indent for the ball bearing locking mechanism. However, it didn't compromise security. The rest of the shackle was still retained in the lock and the chain was still retained in the lock body. So it worked out all right. Now let's take a look at the lock. You can see that we were successful in breaking the hardened steel and brass where it was the weakest. However, I was not able to exploit that by putting a wedge-shaped punch right about here. I think if I spent a little bit more time, I may have been able to get that shackle out. However, we had by far exceeded the amount of time and noise that a thief would invest in trying to steal a bike. So I decided to give it a pass. So Paul, thank you very much for sending these locks my way. To Vero, I think this lock has a very nice design. I would consider using the beefier version of this. I know there's a 10 and a half millimeter chain version. That's something I might use. However, I am very concerned about the glaring weak point in this design, and that is a core that can very easily be picked. If you were to put a more pick resistant core in there, I think this would be a very nice package. So that's all I have for you today. Paul, once again, thank you. To everyone else, if you have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.